love, lost potential, wasted passions. Wuthering Heights is a story that depicts all three. Catherine Earnshaw and Heathcliff have grown up together from the time Catherine's father <coughs> brought the orphan boy home from one of his travels to raise as his own son. And as time has progressed, they have come to love each other more deeply than many humans think possible. The love they share is a wild and passionate one. They are inseparable. They are each other's lifeline. They are each other's being. <laughs> However, the boy of the neighboring family, Edgar Linton, has come to love Kathy as well. But to Kathy, his love is nothing to what she and Heathcliff share. Unfortunately, and to Catherine's shame, her brother, who has always detested Heathcliff, has brought him lower than is acceptable in the eyes of society. And because of this, she chooses to let Edgar court her. However, things soon begin to spiral out of her control, causing her to confide in her maid, <coughs> Nellie, that night, unaware that Heathcliff is listening in on the conversation from the next room. A Cutting from Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Nellie? Nellie, I have a secret and I must let it out. Today, Edgar Linton asked me to marry him, and I accepted him, Nellie, but say whether I should have done so. Well, miss, first and foremost, do you love Mr. Edgar? Of, of course I do. And why do you love him? Well, because he's handsome and pleasant to be with, and he's young and cheerful, and he loves me, and will be rich, and Kathy, that's what you really want. Marry oh, Mr. Edgar then. But let's hear what you're unhappy about. Y your brother will be pleased. You will leave a disorderly, comfortless home and move into a well respectable one. You love Edgar. Edgar loves you. All seems smooth and easy. Where's your obstacle? Here, in my heart and in my soul, I'm convinced I'm wrong. I have no business marrying Edgar Linton. And if my brother had not brought Heathcliff so low, I shouldn't have thought of it. It would degrade me to marry Heathcliff now. So he shall never know how I love him, and not because he's handsome, Nelly, but because he's more myself than I am. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. And Linton's is as different as frost from fire. Before this speech had ended, Nelly became aware of Heathcliff's presence and having turned slightly, she saw him rise from the bench and steal out noiselessly. He had listened until he heard Catherine say it would degrade her to marry him and had stayed to hear no further. However, Catherine, unaware, continued, My great miseries in this walled up in Heathcliff's miseries. And I watched and felt each from the beginning. My great thought in living is himself. I love you, <coughs> Linton. It's like the foliage in the woods. I will change it, I'm well aware, as winter changes the trees. My love for Heathcliff resembles the eternal rocks beneath. A source of little visible delight, but necessary. Nelly, I am Heathcliff. He's always, always in my mind, not as a pleasure any more than I'm always a pleasure to myself, but as my own being. At that moment, there was a clattering noise just outside the door, causing Nelly to start. Wait. It's Joseph, and I think Heathcliff might be with him. In fact, I'm not sure he wasn't here earlier. Just then, Joseph, one of the stable hands, burst through the door. That blasted gypsy boy gets worse each day. He's gone and left the gate open as he went off galloping over the moors. No. Do you think he heard, Nelly? I think he heard something, miss. What? <coughs> I think he heard up until the bit where he said it would degrade you to marry him. Oh, Nelly! Nelly, what have I done? He's gone! I've lost him! I shall never see Heathcliff again! And so it seemed that they never would. For Heathcliff had left, and for three years he stays away, giving not a word to anyone. During this time, Catherine, having given up all hope of Heathcliff's return, has married Edgar Linton. But now, at the end of these three years, Heathcliff returns with untold wealth, having made quite the gentleman of himself. However, Edgar has forbidden Heathcliff to see Cathy out of fear and jealousy, and this throws Catherine into the greatest of all turmoils, seeing as she has lost her one true love. She is so distraught, she wanders out onto the moors one night during a terrible storm, deliriously calling for Heathcliff. She is found and brought back home, 
but her trip onto the moors has made her deathly ill, and as she lies dying, Heathcliff comes to make one last calling on his love. Kathy, how can I bear it? Catherine gazed with straining eagerness toward the entrance of the chamber where Heathcliff now stood, and in a stride or two was at her side. You and Edgar have broken my heart. And now, you come to me, as if you were the one to be pitied. I shall not pity you, not I. You've killed me and thriven on it. I shouldn't care what you suffered. I care nothing for your sufferings. Why shouldn't you suffer? I do. Will you forget me? Will you be happy when I'm in the earth? Are you possessed with the devil to talk to me in that manner when you're dying? Do you not reflect that all those words have been branded into my memory and eating deeper eternally after you've left me? You know you lie to say I have killed you. Is it not sufficient for your infernal selfishness that while you are at peace, I shall writhe in the torments of hell? I shall not be at peace. Why did you betray your own heart, Cathy? You loved me. Then what right had you to leave me? What right? Answer me! For the poor fancy you felt for Linton. Because misery and degradation and death and nothing that God or Satan could inflict would have parted us. You! Of your own will did it. I have not broken your heart, Cathy. You have broken it. And in breaking it, you've broken mine. Let me alone. Let me alone. If I've done wrong, I'm dying for it. I forgive you. Forgive me. It is hard to forgive and to look at those eyes. But yes, I forgive what you've done to me. I love my murderer, but yours, how can I? Heathcliff groaned a curse and pulled Catherine closer as consciousness left her. And at that moment, Edgar enters the room and glares at his unwelcomed intruder. But Heathcliff stopped all demonstrations at once by placing the lifeless looking form into Edgar's arms and then dashing from the room into the gardens where he spends a miserable and lonely night. That next morning, he sees Nellie come to bear him the news. She's dead. I've not waited on you to learn that. Put your handkerchief away. Don't sniver before me. Curse you all. She wants none of your tears. Yes, she's dead. Tell me, how, how did she die? All quietly as a lamb. May she wake as kindly in the other world. May she wake in torment. She's a lie to the end. Where is she? Not there, not in heaven, not Paris, where? Oh, you said you cared nothing for my sufferings. And I pray one prayer. I repeat it till my tongue stiffens. Catherine Earnshaw, may you not rest as long as I am living. You said I killed you. Haunt me then. The murder do haunt their murderers, I believe. I know the ghosts have wandered the earth. Be with me always. Take any form. Drive me mad. Only do not leave me in this abyss where I cannot find you. It's unutterable. I cannot live without my life. I cannot live without my soul.